Hello everyone, welcome back to my Code to Care video series. We have an uh, exciting day today. We have a uh, guest on the series. We have Dr. Peter Lee, president of Microsoft Research, where he heads the incubation of new research-powered products and lines of businesses in areas such as AI, computing foundations, health, and life sciences. Peter's also the co-author of this really great book, The AI Revolution in Medicine. And this is a book we actually bought for every InterSystems employee, all of our 2000 employees last year. Uh, and it's really fantastic. If you haven't read it, I would encourage that. So what I'd like to do is I'll um, welcome Peter into this big box on our uh, screen and we'll have some nice discussions about AI. So Peter, welcome to Code to Care. Oh, uh, thank you. It's really uh, great to be here. And uh, wow, what an interesting way to be uh, to be brought onto the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe your first time appearing in a light board in a box like this. <laughs> yes, great, great. Okay, where, uh, where I wanted to start is, um, you know, we're in the early days of our Gen AI journey, uh, I would say. Um, you know, how would you characterize it? I mean, we're enthusiastic about Gen AI. We've obviously enjoyed the first two, three years with it, where 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 do you see us in that in that um, in that journey? Well, you know, one thing that I thought about a lot is the fact that when the world undergoes a major technological revolution, it always leads to outcomes that no one could predict. Mm -hmm. You know, we sometimes think we're smart enough to know what the impact of a new technology, you know, disruptive technology might be, and what its future uses would be. Uh, but we're always wrong. Uh, you know, we're always lacking in imagination. And and so one uh, analogy I've given, this is sort of a crazy, fantastic analogy, is to imagine an alternate universe where uh, uh, people don't have electricity in their homes. So so maybe they're using candles and, you know, fire uh, for light and heat. And someone invents copper wire and discovers that copper wire carries electric current very efficiently over long distances. And we just know that this new invention is going to be transformative and is going to just make life better for everybody. Uh, but we don't exactly know why, because no one has yet invented the light bulb. And yet we're so certain, so committed to the idea that this will be a transformative beneficial technology that big companies and small companies are racing ahead to string copper wire into every city and town, down every street and into, into every home. Uh, regulators are scratching their heads trying to figure out you know, how to regulate this thing. Uh, and it, and it's, it's just a massive uh, effort. Now, I realize that sounds like kind of a fantastic story, but in fact, in real life, this idea has played out many times. Um, one example um, uh, in the world of computing is the invention of the transistor. Uh, the field effect transistor patent was uh, uh, by Lilienfeld in Germany in the mid-1920s. Uh, it took about two decades before people in Bell Labs actually managed to make a transistor. Um, for which they were awarded a Nobel Prize. Uh, that was around 1946. One thing that people don't appreciate, though, is it wasn't until 1951 that the first commercial application of the transistor hit the market. And that first commercial application was a tone generator mm -hmm. you know, for telephone switching. Yeah. Uh, and around the same time, there was also uh, the deployment and invention commercialization of the AM transistor radio. And so when we think about AI today, which is just as profound a technological invention and disruption, you know, I think the things that we're imagining today are the moral equivalents of tone generators and um, AM transistor radios. Sure. In, in the same way that Lilienfeld could not possibly conceive of the digital computer, you know, we can't possibly conceive of what the ultimate uh, real uses of AI will be. Um, and just to bring this into healthcare, uh, I think you can make a similar analogy with the mapping of the human genome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, at that time, who would imagine CAR-T therapy? Uh, who would imagine messenger RNA platforms for sure. vaccines? Sure. And so, uh, so we just have to be agile and be open 
uh, and be humble enough to realize that uh, we can't really imagine what's going to happen uh, and, and, and embrace, uh, I think, the joy of, of this moment. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's, um, it's sort of a hopeful, hopeful vision in a sense. You know, it's not with clarity, like what the future is going to unfold, but I do think there's a level of deserved enthusiasm with where we are right now. But you're right, we're, we're kind of pre-light bulb. The way, the way perhaps we think about the future is going to be dramatically different and dramatically better in, in, in a lot of ways based on your examples. Well, absolutely. And I am a, a very optimistic person about all this, but I, I think we also have to be grounded in the reality that there are risks. Um, you know, going back to the copper wire analogy, um, you know, people might be getting shocked. Sure, uh, sure. Houses might be burning down. Um, you know, there might be crazy people, you know, putting their tongues on this thing. <laughs> there might be charlatans saying that we have copper wire technology and all they're doing are making coat hangers out of it. There, there's all sorts of um, uh, kind of uh, both positive and negative uh, downstream consequences of disruptive new technologies. Would, would you say uh, in healthcare, I know all of us are enthousi enthusiastic about ambient. Seems like a really good initial use case for Gen AI. Would you say that's the light bulb in our industry or that's just uh, um, you know a good start, but, uh, but the best is yet to come, let's say. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, it's a good start. It, it's a meaningful start. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, when I meet doctors, you know, who uh, maybe were contemplating retiring or leaving the profession, and sometimes with tears in their eyes, right? They're expressing that, you know, ambient clinical intelligence. You know, just for the simple act of no starting a clinical encounter note, which is sort of the simplest possible thing you could imagine doing uh, just to see the emotional response to that uh, is uh, it's moving um, and very gratifying to see that and you know I uh, there was a at the Department of Veterans Affairs last year there was a, a blind test of ambient clinical intelligence yep. um, products and I was shocked to see 150 products wow. Wow. from around the world entered. Uh -huh. Just imagine that in two years, right. 150 products yeah. uh, advancing because of generative AI in that space. So I think it's a, it's a good start. But, sure. you know, again, uh, going back maybe to my transistor analogy, you know, AM transistor radios were a good thing also. Yeah, 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 um, true, true. And, you know, I think that that's, that's a fine thing, but I think it just barely scratches the surface of what's truly going to be possible. Great, great. Well, thank you very much for joining the show, Peter. And hope to talk oh, to you thank soon. You. All right. That's it. Uh, bye bye until next time.